Cassie here with Solon Public Library's Digital Story Times. It is summer! <laughs> it's finally here and our theme for summer reading this year is Imagine Your Story. So we are going to read all kinds of stories about fairy tales and tall tales and magical creatures and nursery rhymes. So we're gonna have a really great time this year. Uh, but first we need to start with our welcome song just like we always do. So we're gonna wiggle our fingers and we're gonna shake our hands and we're gonna rub them together really fast, really fast, really fast and put them on our knees. Okay, here we go. If you wanna read a book, clap your hands. If you wanna read a book, clap your hands. If you wanna read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you wanna read a book, clap your hands. Okay, what do we do after we clap our hands? That's right, we stomp our feet. If you wanna read a book, stomp your feet. If you wanna read a book, stomp your feet. If you wanna read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you wanna read a book, stomp your feet. Okay, what do we do after we stomp our feet? That's right, we twirl around. If you wanna read a book, twirl around. If you wanna read a book, twirl around. If you wanna read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you wanna read Okay, for our last verse, we're going to be as quiet as we can, and we're going to whisper, hooray. If you want to read a book, whisper, hooray, hooray. If you want to read a book, whisper, hooray, hooray. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, whisper, hooray, hooray. Okay, our theme song this summer is one that I made up the words to. <laughs> it's called Once Upon a Time, and it's to the tune of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And it goes like this. Once upon a time so grand, we listened to stories from across the land. With kings and queens and dragons too. Folk tale heroes with oxen blue. <laughs> Once upon a time so grand, we listened to stories from across the land. Okay, we're gonna sing it together. Are you ready? Once upon a time so grand, we listened to stories from across the land. With kings and queens and dragons too, folk tale heroes with oxen blue. Once upon a time so grand, we listened to stories from across the land. Yay! Okay, our first story today is about a small magical creature called a leprechaun. <laughs> and usually we read about leprechauns in March around St. Patrick's Day. So our book that we're going to read today is called The Story of the Leprechaun, written by Katherine Teagan and illustrated by Sally Ann Lambert. So let's learn about leprechauns. A little man, about two feet tall, lived under a large tree by a stream. You could easily find him by listening for the tap, tap, tap of his hammer. The little man was a shoemaker. He spent his days making shoes that were green, gold, and lavender, some with pointy toes and some with high heels, for the people who lived nearby, and for the fairies who lived in the woods. Those look like some fancy shoes. The people knew he was a leprechaun, for there were many fairies like him who lived outside villages. 
Look at all the little fairy people. There's little, there's uh, little fairy houses in the in the trees, and even some in the little mushrooms. That looks like a fun place to live. The people paid the leprechaun with pieces of gold for the shoes that he cobbled. The fairy shoes were made of satin and they were tiny. The fairies brought their gold to the leprechaun too. The leprechaun needed a place to keep his gold. He was a bit of a miser, so he didn't like to spend his money. An old metal pot became the perfect place for all of his wealth. His shoes were so prized that soon his pot of gold was overflowing. Hmm, leprechauns and pots of gold. One day, a man named Tim came to the leprechaun shop by the tree. He wanted a pair of shoes that would be violet blue with thick heels. As he was describing the shoes to the leprechaun, Tim spied the pot of gold. Tim knew that if he could capture the leprechaun, he would be granted three wishes because leprechauns are magic. I'll come back in a few days to collect my shoes, said Tim. The leprechaun was no fool. He knew what the man was really after. What was he really after? His pot of gold and those three wishes. So the leprechaun buried his pot of gold in a field filled with berry bushes. So he's hiding his gold from Tim, so Tim doesn't find it. A few days later, Tim came back and the leprechaun gave him the violet blue shoes. But when the leprechaun turned to hide his payment, he was snatched from behind. Uh-oh. The leprechaun could not escape. Now Tim could get what he wanted. For my first wish, I want you to show me where the pot of gold is hidden. For my second wish, I want a hundred pairs of shoes. And for my third wish, I want three more wishes. The leprechaun said, I can grant you the first two wishes, but the third wish is a greedy trick and cannot be granted. So Tim's only going to get two of his wishes. The leprechaun brought Tim to the field and pointed to the spot where the gold was buried. Tim had no shovel to dig with, so he marked the spot with a stick and a shoe. He would come back later. So look, he put one of the fancy shoes that the leprechaun made him on top of the stick to mark his spot. But when Tim returned, he could not believe his eyes. There were 200 sticks with 200 shoes all over the field. It was leprechaun magic. So what happened? The leprechaun tricked him. He did tell him where the gold was buried, so he did fulfill his wish, but he made it hard so Tim wouldn't be able to find the gold. Tim dug many holes in the field, but he couldn't find the spot where the gold was buried. After a few hours, he gave up. When he tried to collect the shoes, each one disappeared. The leprechaun had tricked him. So not only did he not get the gold, but he lost his fancy shoes too. The leprechaun needed to find a better place to hide his gold. He knew that rainbows were magic. You could never tell where one ended, and if he buried his gold at the end of one, only he would know how to find it again. That sounds like a good plan to me. So that's what he did. People still try to find his gold, but they never will. Listen for the sound of the leprechaun. Tap, tap, tap as he cobbles his shoes. Perhaps if you find him, and if you are very nice to him, he will grant you a wish. The end.
The leprechaun hid his treasure at the end of the rainbow. So we're going to sing a song about rainbows. <laughs> it's called Colors We Know, and it's a parachute song. So I have my parachute here, and if you have a blanket at home, you can pretend that that's your parachute, or you can just pretend that you're here in the library with me and my parachute. <laughs> Okay, here we go. And the tune to the song is Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, just like our uh, Once Upon a Time song that we sang earlier. All right, here we go. Red and orange, green and blue, shiny yellow, purple too. <laughs> These are the colors that we know way up rainbow. <laughs> Red and orange, green and blue, shiny yellow, purple too. <laughs> last book today is about another tiny person. <laughs> this book is called Tom Thumb, retold and illustrated by Richard Jesse Watson. And I'm going to do a little retelling myself since the story is long, but good. <laughs> if you want to read the whole thing, you can check the book out from the library. Long ago, in the days of knights and giants, wizards and fairies, there lived a poor farmer and his wife. One day, a beggar came to their humble cottage, and they gave him a big bowl of fresh goat's milk and some coarse brown bread. Now the beggar was none other than Merlin, the greatest of all wizards traveling in disguise. And he noticed that even though everything was neat and comfortable in the cottage, the farmer and his wife seemed sad. They told him it was because they had no children. I long for a child, the tearful wife declared, even if the babe were no bigger than my husband's thumb. So Merlin went to visit the queen of the fairies, and in due season, the farmer and his wife were blessed with the tiniest of tiny boys. The fairies named him Tom Thumb and dressed him in clothes only fairies could have made. Because he was so tiny, human fingers are too big to make clothes for him. Tom grew older, but he never grew bigger, and he was a clever lad full of jokes and games and loved to explore, but because he was so small, his curiosity could be very dangerous. One day, he peeked in to a bowl of cake batter that his mom was making, and he fell inside. She didn't see, and she put, him in the, uh, put the cake in the oven to bake, and as he struggled to get out, it made the cake pan move around, and his mother thought that a spell had been cast on the cake, so she flung it out of the door. A poor peddler passing by picked, picked it up, but then heard Tom screaming from inside <laughs> and dropped the pan and ran screaming himself down the road. He squirmed free and made his way home, where his mother washed him in a teacup bath and tucked him into bed. One day, while he was helping bring the cows home with his father, uh, a raven flying overhead mistook Tom for a frog and swooped down and carried him off. The raven, discovering at last that Tom was not a fat and tasty frog, dropped him in a castle. The castle belonged to a giant named Grumbong. <laughs> because giants can't think very well, they can be dangerous when they get in a bad mood. So the fairies had given him a special charm to soothe him, a seashell he could put up to his ear to hear the soothing sound of the ocean. Have you ever tried that? It's true, if you put a seashell up against your ear, you can hear the sounds of the ocean. So Tom accidentally startled the giant and he dropped his seashell and it broke. He was very upset. So he picked Tom up and he swallowed him. Uh, Tom kicked and struggled in the giant's insides trying to get out. And minutes later, Grumbong turned green and squeamy and spit the boy out into the sea. 
Now, fortunately, <laughs> instead of drowning in the sea, instead Tom was eaten by another creature, a fish. Tom had a lot of time to think in the fish's belly and he said to himself, no one is ever going to eat me again, ever. He found a sturdy fish bone and made himself a sword so the creatures would think twice before swallowing him. One day, the fish was caught by a, fi a royal fisherman. And when he was brought to the castle and cut open, all of the servants were surprised to see Tom Thumb inside. So they took him to the king, who was delighted with the tiny lad. But one day, Tom accidentally startled the cook who was bringing the dessert he had just made for the king and, uh, and ruined it. The cook flew into a rage and went straight to the king, telling him, Tom has ruined your favorite dessert on purpose. So the king imprisoned Tom in a mousetrap. Long days passed and Tom sighed. <sighs> what will become of my poor parents? What will become of me? Will they cut off my head? Not for a while, came the voice of a friendly mouse. King Arthur and all the knights of the round table have gone to battle. The giant Grumbong is waging war against the castle for no reason. <gasps> I know why, gasped Tom. It's because Grumbong's special charm has been broken. Nothing will calm him except that. We must get him another. So Tom escaped with the help of the mice and he rounded up bunnies and birds and insects and all kinds of woodland creatures to help him deliver a new shell to Grumbong the giant. When they got to the battle, it was so loud and noisy, no one paid them any attention. So Tom took his sword and poked a small hole in the end of the shell, and then all together Tom and the animals blew into the shell as hard as they could, and they made a shell trumpet. Boo -boo! Well, that stopped everyone in their tracks. In the silence, Tom and his mousy steed led the animals straight to the feet of the towering giant and handed him his new shell. The giant was so happy that he turned and went back to his castle, quiet and content again. The king was so grateful to Tom for ending the battle that he made Tom a knight, Sir Thomas Thumb, and offered him all the gold he wanted to take back to his parents. Well, Tom couldn't even carry one piece of gold, let alone a treasure trove. So the king had his servants make him a series of tiny wagons that were all filled with gold coins and brought back to Tom's parents' house with his woodland parade of friends. And so it was that Tom Thumb helped his parents and earned his place as the smallest knight of the round table. The end. Oh, I love that story of Tom Thumb. I love the idea of a tiny person who can save everyone. Another tiny magical creature, forest creature, is a gnome. And I have my little gnome friend here, and he is going to hide under one of these five toadstools. We have some different colors here. We have a red toadstool and a yellow toadstool, a blue one, a pink one, and an orange one. So my little gnome friend is gonna hide and we're gonna guess where he is. Okay, my gnome friend is hidden, so we're gonna say a little rhyme as we look for him. It goes like this. Little gnome, little gnome, where could you be? Are you in your red mushroom home? Let's look and see. <gasps> nope, no gnome friend. Okay, which one should we look at next? Should we do the yellow one? All right. Little gnome, little gnome, where could you be? Are you in your yellow mushroom home? Let's look and see. 
nope, no gnome. Which one should we do next? Should we do the orange one? Okay. Little gnome, little gnome, where could you be? Are you in your orange mushroom home? Let's look and see. <gasps> look, he was. He was in his orange home. Great job. Okay, he's going to hide one more time and we're going to look for him again. Okay, he's all hidden. Which one should we start with? Should we start with the blue one? All right. Little gnome, little gnome, where could you be? Are you in your blue mushroom home? Let's look and see. Nope, no gnome. Which one should we look at next? Should we do the pink one? Okay. Little gnome, little gnome, where could you be? Are you in your pink mushroom home? Let's look and see. Nope, no gnome. Okay, which one should we look at next? Should we do the red one? Okay. Little gnome, little gnome, where could you be? Are you in your red mushroom home? Let's look and see. Oh, there he is. He was in his red mushroom home. Good job. Okay, friends, that's the end of our first summer reading story time. Hope to see you again next week for our uh, magical story time next week. But now we need to say goodbye with our goodbye song. We read a 